everybody, Michelle McLuhan, astrologer, life navigator, and I'm bringing you an astrology update for the next new moon, which is happening on the 5th of July, and in South Africa, which is where I live, in the very early hours of the 6th. So new moons are always auspicious times to plant new seeds, and this is a very, very fertile, feminine new moon. Uh, it's also a very amplified, in a positive way, new moon, because it's aligned very closely with Sirius, which is known as our spiritual sun. So I'm going to try and give you a little bit of a heads up in terms of what you can expect in terms of coming into this energy, because as you know, everything goes around, everything is cyclical. And so as we approach this new moon, you might already be feeling the energy. We already have the sun in the sign of Cancer uh, since sort of 21st, 22nd of June. Uh, and now we have the sun and the moon coming into an alignment and we also have the planet Venus in the sign of Cancer. So there's a lot of Cancerian energy as well as this Sirius gateway. So the Sirius gateway happens once a year at 14 degrees of Cancer. And this, the new moon is at 14 degrees of Cancer. Now it happens every year that it will align with the sun being at 14 degrees of Cancer. But it doesn't always align with the new moon, which basically amplifies the energy substantially and the reason it amplifies the energy substantially is that cancer the sign of cancer is ruled by the moon so each of the signs has a planetary ruler and the sign of cancer is ruled by the moon so now we have the moon in cancer which is basically in its its natural domain uh, the moon is at home in cancer which means that the energy um, of a cancer full moon is one of the most powerful energies you can get. So it will amplify the cancerian themes of um, your inner world being more, more sort of profound than the outer world. Cancer rules things like home, family, community, your, in, your innermost circle of friends and family. It represents family issues. It's the sign of um, deep soul emotional connection as well. So whenever we have the sun or any planet in Cancer, there's usually an amplified connection, an amplified sensitivity. Um, feelings might be bigger. That sense of wanting to come home might be bigger. Um, that's really what Cancer and energy is. Cancer is the sign of the crab. And if you watch a crab, it'll... It'll come out of its little, underneath its little rock and get its little piece of bread that you've thrown into the rock pool and then it'll scuttle back under the rock where it's home and safe and secure and nestled and nurtured. So cancer really is the sign of nestling, nurturing, uh, caring. It's the sign of caring for others, caring for ourselves. This is a very clear uh, new moon to pay attention to self-care as well as caring for others. Um, but it's a very receptive new moon. And as I said, um, with the moon being in the sign of Cancer, uh, right next to the sun, this, the moon is really in charge, this new moon, because the moon is stronger than the sun. The sun is not as strong in Cancer. It'll be strong next month because it goes into Leo, which is the sign that which the sun rules Leo. The moon rules Cancer. So this new moon is definitely a, a moon-based, moon-ruled new moon. Um, we can bring these themes that I've just discussed of family, home, nurturing, nourishing, healing, emotions up into the spotlight. Um, it can help us to feel and open more, open our hearts more. It's definitely a heart-opening new moon. You might have already felt this over the last few weeks. Um, there's been quite a lot of emotional energy, a lot of things coming up from the past. Cancerian energy can bring things up from the past, our ancestral stuff, our family stuff, the things that we haven't completely reconciled or let go of or processed emotionally. So it can be a time when deep emotions come to the surface so that we can feel them, see them and let them flow through us. It is also a time of taking some time out to make sure that we are filling our own cup um, as well as just giving out our energy. So something I came across a little while ago 
was to ensure that you're giving from your saucer, not your cup. It's a very helpful analogy. If you're giving from your cup constantly, your cup might run a bit dry. So if you're giving from your saucer, it means that your cup is full, it's overflowing, and there's plenty more to give. Because if you're giving from your cup and your cup is empty, then resentment can creep in, then anger can creep in. So better to be making sure that you keep your own cup full and give from the saucer. It's just a a little analogy which I found very helpful. Now when we bring in this energy of Sirius, uh, Sirius is known as the spiritual sun. It's 23 times brighter than our sun. So when it's aligned at the exact same degree as the new moon, this is a really beautiful healing, opening, regenerative portal. Sirius is related to awakening, um, higher spiritual uh, insights coming in, sparks of divine kind of inspiration. Um, And definitely, as I say, it's a replenishing energy. It's basically shining the light on, on healing. That's what I see because it's in the sign of cancer. So it's that, that's what it's doing. It's shining its light on what needs to move through, what needs to be let go of, so that we can actually move into our full, true spiritual power and our divine right, our divine, our divine purpose, if you like. So this is a very powerful month that we have ahead of us with this sort of bringing, coming in quite early in the month. Um, just before I forget, we, John and I, my partner and I, are starting a new Journey to Freedom course. It's, I think it's our 16th course that we've run over the last four years. We started during the COVID lockdown. And um, we've guided many, many hundreds of souls through this 13-week journey. It's called the Journey to Freedom. And it's very aligned with what I'm saying about Sirius. Because this is a time of awakening on our planet. We are awakening to the truth of who we really are and letting go of those um, elements of us that are not actually aligned with our awakening process. And this is happening globally, it's happening personally as well. So the journey to freedom is the journey of coming back to the truth of who you really are and in that process we get to actually look at our patterns, let go of them and learn different tools and techniques to align with the truth of who we are. So if you'd like to have a look um, at what the journey is all about, the link is in the description below. And we offer the first week for free. And the week uh, that we're offering for free is finding new purpose. There will be two Zoom calls, two 90-minute Zoom calls, some journal work, some creative stuff to do. And so it's a little standalone workshop where you can see if um, the whole thing resonates with you. But you'll also benefit from, from the week as well. So have a look at that and you can register now. Bookings are open for that. So back to this beautiful new moon and Sirius. It's really, really beautiful energy. Back to the Cancerian part. Um, Something that's also to be aware of is Cancer is not usually a sign that's um, aligned or that's sort of seen as a transformative sign. But there is a crab called the Hermit Crab. The Hermit Crab actually sheds its shell when it grows too big for it, apparently. And this feels very, very relevant to this new moon. What are we ready to shed? What have we outgrown? What emotional responses have we outgrown? Uh, What childhood trauma have we processed and now can let go and leave behind us? That feels like an energy that's coming in too. Are we vulnerable enough? Can we be honest enough with ourselves to look at our own issues? Can we take responsibility for our emotions without projecting them outwards? Because the tendency is to project them out. So something comes in which hurts us and there's a reaction outward onto whatever it was that hurt us. But the hurt is already inside us. And that's what this Cancerian energy for the next few weeks is asking us to look at. Where are the hurt bits inside us that need to actually be released? Now, helping us do this is we have a trine, which means it's a very beautiful flowing uh, connection with the planet Saturn. And Saturn in astrology 
is the teacher planet. He's the one who comes in and says, right, so how's this going? What needs to change? Saturn is in the sign of Pisces, which is the final sign of the zodiac. And Neptune is not right next to it, but Neptune is also in the sign of Pisces. Neptune is an outer planet. It takes 164 years to go around. So it's not every day that it gets to where it is right now, which is at the 29th degree, almost at the very end of Pisces. And it's been hovering around there for a while. It's still going to be hovering around for a while before it moves um, forward um, into a new sign next year, into Aries next year. But right now, it's at the final, final degree of Pisces, and it's retrograde, which means it's going backwards again. So we're revisiting these themes. Saturn is also going retrograde, which means it's going backwards again. So we're, re we're revisiting the themes of um, our true inner connection. Um, it's a releasing energy. And that is what Neptune is saying. Can we um, connect with the, it's almost like the void. If you feel that you're in the void, if you feel confused, if you feel that you don't know what's going to be happening in the future, you're not alone and there's nothing wrong with you. A lot of people are feeling that. The future is very unknown right now. So these two planets are assisting us in being able to be okay with the unknown. So to actually choose to go into that quiet space and see what's there and just be able to be there and to almost trust the void, trust the unknown. And that's a, that's a spiritual process. That's not something that the human part of us wants to do. The human part of us wants to avoid the void at all costs because it's the unknown. And the unknown is scary for the human mind. The human mind wants certainty. And this is not a time of certainty. This is a time of uncertainty. So I've said it before, it's almost like we're being pushed through the eye of the needle. If you go back into the past, if you go back going into the future, there's panic, there's fear for many people. If you come into the present and you connect with the stillness inside you, that's where you find the guidance. And I feel that um, this full moon, being aligned with the spiritual sun, gives us a, a true portal for inner connection, for um, bringing ourselves to a higher level of our spiritual connection. Not that there's higher or lower, but a more intimate connection with who we really, really are at the core. So I think it's a very special, very significant, very pertinent new moon. It sets the scene for the next lunar month. It's kind of, I see this as a kind of a reset point. So if you have been battling lately, what if you could just reset, like a computer? You know, if the computer doesn't work, you sometimes switch it off, <laughs> switch it on again, and then it, it suddenly works. It feels like it's a reset point. It feels, and that means, a reset point means letting go, letting go and forgiving, forgiving somebody else that's seemingly done you a disservice, Feeling, forgiving yourself for what you might have seen as something that wasn't particularly perfect. Um, and also trusting in the flow of life, trusting that something else is arising. It has to. We're in a dynamic universe. Nothing stays the same. Everything's changing all the time. So if you are in one of those places where nothing seems to be moving, just know that it's supposed to be like that. And something that might be helpful with the new moon in Cancer and the energy of the next few weeks is to look back on your life. Just take a few moments and maybe journal it. Look back on your life to see when miracles have happened, when things have happened and aligned in a way which you didn't plan, in a way which you didn't see coming. Those meetings that somehow happened in a way which you can't explain. And when we actually look back and we make a note of those things, it gives us, it helps us to trust that why wouldn't that happen again? If you have had miracles happen in the past and we have miracles happening every day, we just don't notice them. Why wouldn't a miracle happen? Why can't we expect miracles? Why can't we open our energy to miracles? And I would see this, um, this gateway, this serious gateway, as an opening 
opening to miracles, opening to healing, opening to the new earth, the way we want to be, community, family, beauty, love, um, growth, connection, warmth. Those are, that's what we're actually heading towards. So if we can feel that in ourselves, if we can come back to stillness, if we can feel that fullness, that's what ripples out into the rest of the field and that's what changes our consciousness and changes the world. I pull a card for us for this new moon out of my favorite pack, The Divine Feminine by Megan Watterson. It's a beautiful pack. And the, the card I pulled was Catherine Labore. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And she is the patroness of miraculous healing. So, I mean, you know, can't make this up. Her intention or the intention for us all, is I am ready to heal. I am worthy of the miracles meant for me. Catherine Libore embodies our capacity to facilitate our own healing. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but when your soul selects this card, it can feel effortless to ask for what our loved ones need. We can fall on our knees at times to pray for the health and highest possible outcome for our beloved children, partners or friends. What's often far more difficult is asking for all that we need. For many of us, lack of self-worth can get in the way of realizing that we can ask for so much more and that ultimately there is no difference between praying for our own needs and the needs of our loved ones. This is very Cancerian energy. There are so many miracles graces and blessings that don't arrive simply because we don't ask for them. Spirit is ethical. Spirit does not interfere with our intrinsic right to choose our own adventure story. Free will is ours, so we have to ask for spirit to intervene in the effort of our own healing. Ask and you will find. This is a spiritual truth. And also, suffering is optional. Suffering does not glorify us or make us holy. At any point, we can ask for the highest possible good to shower down on us. Just feel that. To shower down on you. We can ask to be healed in ways that we can't even imagine by handing that healing over to the divine. And this is very clearly what I'm seeing with Saturn and Neptune in Pisces in this beautiful alignment with the new moon. It's this asking for help. And then releasing it. So asking and then releasing it. Then we don't go back and revisit it and cogitate and worry about it. We ask for it and then we release it out into the field of the divine, of the miraculous. The healing might not arrive in the way we picture being healed. Our lower back, for example, if it's physical, may still throb with pain, but our heart has shifted. And there's a miraculous amount of light within our lives again. If we can hand over an attachment to what healing, and let's call it healing and abundance and freedom, is going to look like, we can receive all the blessings waiting for us. The soul voice meditation is what can I ask for help in healing? So I think that ties in really beautifully with this new moon in Cancer. Really, sort of really connect with the feminine. And that goes for guys too. This is not just for women. Look at your chart if you know your chart to see where this is playing out. It'll be at 14 degrees of Cancer. And if you've had your chart done, you'll be able to see the houses and you can actually work out what area in life this is pertaining to. Where this healing might be up for you um, this year and at this time. I hope that has helped you. And if it has, please would you like the video? It helps to get it out there to more people. If you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe and hit the notification button and comment. Let us know, let me know how you feel and how you're feeling this energy, how you're connecting with this energy. Be gentle with yourself at this time. Allow those emotions to flow through you. They're not, they're not going to ever kill us. And often the, the fear is that we're going to get caught in the emotion and not be able to move on from it. But it's not true. It's true that when you're able to feel the feeling and allow that emotion to move through you, um, it actually moves through you. It's energy in motion. 
So if, you allow, if we're able to allow it to move through us without trying to attach a story to it, without trying to fix it, without trying to analyze it, it actually starts to move through and out. And that's the clearing and that's the healing. We're working with this theme on our Inner Space community as well this month. You can join our community just for the month if you like. And our theme is Emotional Resilience. The link for that is below as well. So you're welcome to join us there as well for a little bit more support. Thank you so much for listening. And thanks for tuning into my channel and for liking my channel. Um, and take care of yourselves. This new moon is a beautiful new reset point. Thank you.